Good morning, everyone. Okay, so now it's the real thing. So, first of all, uh, hi. Uh, welcome to the Python Dev Room at FOSTEM 2020. Um, let me introduce you Peter, who's going to tell us more about the uh, possibilities to interface sudo with Python. Hi. Thanks. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. No? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, first of all, let me give you a quick overview of what I will be uh, talking about today. Uh, I try to define sudo, uh, even if most of you know it mo uh, most likely. Uh, then, I will talk about a uh, bit about a few lesser known features of sudo, and then uh, I will. Uh, change to our main topic, extending sudo in Python, which is a brave new feature of uh, Py uh, sudo. So what is sudo? Uh, for many years, I didn't know much about sudo. Just like, uh, I, I knew just what everyone else, that uh, I can use it for administrative problem, uh, uh, comments. Uh, then uh, last year, I learned that uh, Todd Miller, uh, maintainer of sudo, is my colleague. Uh, we became uh, colleagues through an acquisition, and then I became interested in sudo, what it is, what it does, and I, I learned quite a lot about it. And then I started to ask uh, people uh, what, uh, at different events what they know about uh, sudo. Uh, and it turned out that uh, many people see, see this uh, little tool as a way to complicate life. As if that is a root user, then wh why use something different? Or wh why not use su uh, the su command or whatever? Uh, but even seasoned administrators told me that, well, it's a prefix for administrative commands, which is technically correct, but uh, it's a lot more. Uh, according to the sudo website, uh, sudo allows a system administrator to de delegate authority uh, by giving certain users the ability to run uh, some comments as root or another user by providing an audit trail of uh, the comments and their arguments. So as you can see, even from this description, it's a lot more. But we will learn quickly that, uh, yes, there are a lot more possibilities. Well, uh, with the help of sudo, uh, you can even make some sandwiches at least according to XKCD. So uh, let's jump into uh, some lesser known features. For example, uh, you can store the digest of applications in the sudoers file, and uh, this way you can prevent uh, modified binaries from uh, running. While uh, this uh, database is quite difficult to maintain, on the other hand, it can give you an additional uh, layer of protection. Uh, another uh, mm, possibility is session recording. You can record everything what is happening uh, on a uh, terminal and play back, back like a video. So even if uh, you need to get, give uh, shell access to your users, you can follow uh, what they are doing. Uh, recordings are difficult to modify as they are not clear text. On the other hand, as they are saved uh, locally, it's quite easy to uh, delete. But stay tuned. Uh, here I was supposed to give a, a quick demo, uh, but as I'm not presenting from my own laptop due to technical differences, uh, difficulties, uh, I have to skip it. But practically, I wanted to show that uh, I'm typing a few comments in a uh, sudo session, and uh, then I can play it back and view everything as, uh, as it was happening. Uh, version 1.8 of uh, so you introduced a plugin-based architecture, which means that even basic features of sudo are now implemented as plugins, and you can replace or extend functionality of sudo using plugins. There are both open source and commercial plugins available. An important but often overlooked feature of sudo is logging and alerting. Uh, sudo itself uh, supports only uh, email-based alerts. So you can uh, configure uh, on what events you, uh, you want to receive an email alert. All events uh, 
uh, are uh, also recorded to uh, syslog. Uh, make sure that your uh, log messages are centralized, otherwise uh, your uh, logs are easy to be deleted if your users have too much uh, rights, like they can open a shell. Uh, if you use syslogng, uh, then uh, sudo logs are automatically parsed, and you can easily send alerts to uh, Slack, uh, Splunk, uh, any of the cloud services, where, wherever you want. If you are lucky, you never have to use uh, sudo debug logs. Uh, these can be used uh, to uh, uh, debug the rule, sudo uh, rules or to report problems. Here you can see a, a screenshot from Slack uh, with uh, only comments executed by me uh, uh, listed here. So, uh, until now we talked about sudo 1.8 features, but uh, sudo 1.9 is uh, right around the corner. A beta release is already on the sudo website, and it brings many uh, new features to us. Uh, first of all, uh, there will be a recording service, so uh, you can collect uh, session recording centrally. An audit plugin is coming, a, uh, approval framework plug uh, plugin, and, uh, our, uh, and the main feature uh, is uh, support for uh, Python-based plugins. That alone is worth for uh, uh, completely new version. So what is the recording service? Uh, you can collect session recordings uh, cent uh, centrally, uh, and that way uh, us, uh, uh, us, you uh, uh, run a pseudo session, uh, your uh, uh, session is streamed in real time to another location uh, and uh, in, on an encrypted channel. Uh, uh, central uh, session collection is not just convenient, but also uh, means availability. Even if the uh, sending machine is down, you can uh, reach your uh, sessions. And it's also security, as uh, no one can tamper them on the local machine. Uh, the audit plugin is, uh, doesn't introduce anything user visible. On the other hand, it uh, gives API access to and uh, any kinds of uh, sudo logs, uh, which is especially uh, useful uh, from uh, when uh, the Python uh, API will be uh, available for it. As uh, using the audit plugin, you will be able to uh, send logs and alerts uh, from uh, sudo directly without using uh, third-party third applications uh, like uh, Cisco Genji, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the approval uh, fr framework makes possible uh, to approve sessions. So, uh, if uh, so, uh, it's not just uh, che checking permissions in the sudoers file, uh, but also another user needs to approve what you are doing uh, in a session. Right now, it's possible only through uh, third-party plugins, and as uh, they are developed in Rust. Uh, it's not so easy to uh, package or uh, distribute. Uh, once uh, the approval plugin, plugin framework is ready, it's still under development, you will be able to uh, use it from Python as well. And uh, for example, this way you can connect uh, sudo uh, to ticketing systems and check uh, if a given uh, sysadmin is on duty and uh, Mm, or, 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 or there is an open ticket and uh, only allow uh, the session when uh, it's there. And uh, Python support uh, is uh, coming, as I mentioned, uh, which means that you can easily extend uh, mm, sudo using Python. Uh, it's using the same API as the C-based plugins. Uh, on the other hand, you don't need uh, any specialized development environment. Uh, and uh, instead of packaging, you can simply uh, distribute uh, uh, Python code uh, using your config management system. 
uh, the API is the same as the, as the C base plugin, so uh, there is a link here for the uh, for uh, that uh, plugin documentation, and uh, the Python plugin itself also has its own uh, docs. But uh, those are mainly referring to sp Python specific parts. Uh, the first uh, plugin I want to mention is the uh, policy plugin API. Uh, the policy plugin within sudo uh, decides uh, uh, who can do what. Uh, normally it's in the sudoers file, but if you do, uh, use a plugin like uh, in uh, one done in uh, Python, then uh, you replace it completely. Uh, so uh, you need to enable uh, the uh, policy plugins in uh, sudo.conf. I have a, a Python example uh, which uh, allows you to run uh, the command ID and nothing else. Uh, here is the code. Uh, as you can uh, see, it starts uh, by importing the sudo, sudo module. Uh, you, uh, the sudo module itself is uh, not something you can find uh, on your uh, disk, but uh, it's provided uh, by the uh, uh, Python, uh, uh, the sudo Python plugin. Uh, and uh, you need to define a class uh, uh, for uh, your uh, Python code. Uh, you can name it uh, whatever you want, but uh, you uh, need to base it on the sudo uh, Python uh, class. Uh, in case of the uh, policy API, uh, you need to have a, a method called uh, check policy, which receives a few arguments uh, from uh, sudo. Uh, Arcway uh, contains uh, uh, data related to uh, the commands what uh, need, uh, the user wants to execute and uh, embed uh, the in environment. Uh, provided by the user. Uh, the first argument within uh, RP is uh, the command name. We check this one. Uh, and if, if it's uh, different from ID, then uh, we print an arrow message on screen that you are not allowed to run this command, and uh, the sudo session is rejected. If it's not the case, then we go on uh, and create a, a variable containing uh, the minimum in information necessary uh, to execute a command. It's the command name, uh, user ID, and group ID. And finally, we return it to sudo that uh, we accept this command and uh, the data to uh, execute uh, this application. So this is how it looks uh, on screen. And I'm happy that I screen screenshotted everything and not just uh, prepared to demo uh, uh, it live. As now I can show you. Uh, first, uh, I try to run the ls command, but it's rejected. And when I run id, then uh, it uh, runs with uh, root privileges, just as accepted. Uh, the next API is iolox. Uh, this is uh, related to session recording, as it means that you, you get access to uh, all input and output of your uh, uh, sudo command. Uh, at the moment, only one Python implementation uh, of iolox is allowed, uh, but uh, it will be changed uh, soon. There are quite a few possibilities what you can do uh, using uh, the iolox API. For example, break uh, the session if uh, given text appears on screen or when someone types rm-fr uh, on the command line, or you can even use it to uh, ask uh, for a reason why someone is starting a session. The first uh, example here is uh, checking the output on, on the screen. Uh, we import the pseudo module, uh, create a class, and uh, the log TTY out uh, mm, method uh, receives uh, each any time a, a new text appears on screen, it receives uh, in, in a buffer, 
and you can check the content of this uh, buffer uh, from Python. And in my case, if my secret appears on screen, then uh, the, uh, we print that don't look at my secret and uh, reject uh, uh, the session. Mm. You can see here uh, how uh, it works. We uh, start a session. Uh, we change to the root directory, list it. We find a nice looking, interesting looking directory called do not enter, but still we enter it. But when we list it, it has a file called uh, my secret, but it's not printed on screen. As uh, before it, it would be printed, we check it uh, from our, our Python code, uh, see that it's there and uh, break the session. Mm. The next example is a bit uh, more complicated. Uh, when uh, you type anything uh, using uh, sudo, uh, the typed uh, characters printed on the screen one by one. Uh, so uh, we need to collect uh, these uh, in, uh, to, together and check the collected uh, letters uh, if uh, what we are looking for is included uh, in that. In, in this case, we are checking if rm minus fr uh, is uh, included uh, in these collected letters. And if it is, then we break the session before the command is executed. This is how uh, it uh, looks like. We start a uh, sudo session, uh, list the directory, and then start entering rm minus fr. But before uh, we are reaching, before r is printed, uh, uh, the Python code shown previously already uh, finds that, oops, something bad is happening and it, uh, it prints the uh, warning message and uh, stops the session. Uh, here is the third example. It's asking for a reason uh, why uh, the uh, pseudo session is started. Actually, for two reasons. Uh, one is a public reason, and there is a second, a secret reason. Uh, the difference is that for the first one, uh, the, what the user is typing is uh, shown on the screen. Uh, for the second one, uh, only stars are uh, shown on the screen, like when you enter a password. So when someone is behind you with a gun, uh, you, you can type something nice uh, in the public reason uh, and write in the uh, private reason that I'm threatened by a gun. Uh, and obviously, it's, uh, everything is saved into a file, so later on, you can show your boss that, well, even if it was not a nice, nice thing to uh, do, but I was threatened to do it. Mm. And here is how it looks on the screen. Uh, first, uh, my public reason is stated there and entered there and uh, you cannot see on the screen what I uh, typed for secret reason. The uh, last API I want to talk about is the group API, uh, which allows uh, you to uh, uh, do non-Unix group, look, uh, group lookups. Uh, for, exa uh, for example, if uh, you can check here, uh, you can uh, use here external databases or uh, check uh, if an admin is on duty. In my uh, sample code, uh, I used something a lot more simple, uh, and it obviously could be done uh, much more easier uh, using the uh, sudoers. Uh, but that, uh, here I load uh, and actually, this one is uh, loaded from the uh, sudoers file and not from uh, sudo.conf, as you can have multiple of these. Uh, here we load uh, the Python plugin uh, 
with uh, group pi and uh, the given class name. And uh, if uh, the given user is in the uh, uh, group, uh, then one can use, uh, th then uh, he doesn't have to use a password, uh, but uh, session is approved immediately. Uh, here is the code. If we import sudo, uh, create a class, uh, it receives some data from sudo, and we have a hard, uh, some hard-coded groups here, uh, and my group here includes my username. So uh, that, here we check if the username is included in this group and uh, send back uh, accept. This is how uh, uh, I used it in my demos, so that's why I didn't have to uh, type a password in my uh, example screenshots. So as we could see, uh, sudo is not just a prefix, but a lot more fine-tuned permission, se session recording, uh, plug uh, a plugin API, and 1.9, which already uh, available for testing, will uh, include a Python plugin, which you can already test, uh, a se central uh, session recording, and uh, the logging, and logging API and the approval API. And do we have any questions? We have probably two minutes left for questions. Three. <laughs> Who is there? Oh. Thanks for the talk. Um, if you if you uh, do a lot of processing in your Python plugin, is that going to make the session seem uh, laggy or badly performing? Uh, I, so the question was uh, if it uh, using lots too much resources. Yeah, if, if uh, your Python I, plugin does a lot of processing, uh, is your pseudo session going to seem laggy? I did. Personally, I didn't feel, I didn't do measurements, but I uh, just uh, tested it. Uh, I didn't feel that it was measurable. I, I didn't feel that it was slower, but I didn't do ex extensive testing, just a few comments. Obviously, if you have lots of directory listings, whatever appearing on screen, then it might slow a bit down, but uh, I didn't feel anything when I tried it. Great, thanks. Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, here it is. You? Okay. Um, so, when you uh, match up the commands, how, how, are the, how are you sure that nobody will inter inject some examples which break out of uh, Obviously, this is a very simple example I have shown you here. Uh, if you uh, uh, change the uh, order of the parameters, it will already not match. So it, it was a dumb example, uh, but it, it works. Uh, if you want to use it in real world situations, then you need to have more complex matches, but uh, that, uh, that's not an example of fitting a screen. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.